See, I think I just, uh, you know, in reference to that article, which said that, you know, say X percentage of stocks have contributed 50% of the uh, gains. If you really ask me, frankly, you know, all our listeners and all, you know, investors, I would urge them with all due respect, not to get overly carried away with such articles. The reason is because in everything in life, if the numbers will work exactly like that, everything in life. Hi, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for giving us, you know, hearing. Now that we move on to the next panel discussion, I have esteemed panelists with me, and uh, we want to discuss about, uh, you know, the right now. You know, when you are investing in mid and small cap, what are the things that you need to keep it in your mind while investing? So very quickly, uh, I'll introduce myself, and then I'll introduce the other esteemed. Uh, uh, panel members. So we have uh, Mr. Ashish Sumaya uh, on my right. Mr. Ashish Sumaya brings about two and a half decades of experience on the table. Some of you who attended his session yesterday would have got to know why he rotates. He covered up the entire thing, whether it is stock or a portfolio. When you change the performance and uh, invest, there would be a possibility that the best performing fund can become, uh, maybe can underperform very next year. Uh, so it was an interesting session. Then we also had Manoj, who opened up the uh, forum from yesterday, where he talked about, you know, the Bharat Ka Amrit Kal, that was a theme where he covered up the entire uh, uh, things, important aspect about economy, uh, how things are changing, where are we headed. He talked about, he's given us a couple of ratios, uh, which were very important, uh, talked about how government of India is uh, undertaking various reforms, uh, because they keep a track on that. Uh, and we also have Mr. Nimesh Mehta. So Nimesh Mehta heads uh, uh, sales at uh, uh, ASK Investment Manager. He also brings about 23 years of rich experience in terms of investing. He's also authored of a book called uh, uh, Sales Booster, which is one of my favorite books and I have read a couple of times. So uh, Nimesh has been instrumental and played an important role in terms of shaping up ASK's distribution uh, network uh, out there. and. Under his guidance, the AMC has grown many folds. Uh, Ashish heads the white uh, capital, the asset management piece, uh, which includes both mutual fund and AI PMS. Uh, Manoj uh, is the uh, co-founder uh, at Carnelian Asset Management. So, along with Vikas, Manoj, uh, they have built a very great, uh, you know, franchise of uh, PMS. I would say so. As a manufacturer, they are able to beat the benchmark successfully and able to deliver the deliverables in the hand of investors uh, and he was before uh, joining uh, Carnelian he was uh, uh, head of research at Edelweiss spent almost a decade he was known for his forensic uh, research and accounting uh, he was uh, known for uh, uh, sharing the insight which is beyond uh, you know the, the common pieces that we talked about in terms of uh, uh, the risk that you, you're supposed to take so with that, uh, I'll uh, now open the forum. Uh, I would hand it over to uh, Nimesh out here, and maybe Nimesh, if you can start the conversation. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Vikas. Sorry, yeah, you're closing. Thank you, Vikas and PMI, PMS and AIP experts team for giving me an opportunity to moderate a panel discussion uh, with Manoj Bahati, uh, who's an experienced investor of uh, more than two decades. And something which I got to know uh, in recent time, I mean, while well, he has been expert on forensic, but we'll take his, uh, uh, you know, pick his brains during the conversation about it. And uh, second with Ashish Ramaya, uh, whom I worked and learned a lot under uh, at Mukherjee Dosanjh AMC. And Ashish uh, can switch the hats of CEO and CIO pretty easily and quickly. Uh, Vikas and I know what I mean by today also, how quickly uh, he, uh, you know, accommodated uh, to uh, for this panel. Uh, the title uh, today, uh, what uh, are the red flags to look out for uh, when investing in small and mid-cap companies uh, is just apt for all of us to learn from both these experts. Uh, and while answering this uh, red flags, I request both of them to share their rich experience uh, and their organization philosophy and process of selecting small and mid-cap company. Uh, uh, Manoj and Ashish, as always, I'm going to wear the hat of an investor and ask you what comes to my uh, mind uh, uh, as an investor. To start the conversation, I think I'm going to uh, refer back the ET article yesterday. Uh, and that's been in the WhatsApp groups all uh, throughout, which uh, which talks about uh, 
that uh, in the nifty mid cap uh, the et article in the nifty mid cap i'm just reading that in the nifty mid cap 150 and small cap 250 indices 20 stocks have contributed roughly to 50% of uh, respective index rally this year uh, and this means that 13% of the stocks uh, in mid cap 50 150 and 8% stocks in small cap 250 have done the bulk of heavy lifting uh, so far in 2024 it's a short period of time but as an investor uh, that gets me thinking that is currently a lack of depth uh, a red flag in small and mid cap investing uh, anyone if you can just start maybe manoj you want to and then ashish you are mute manoj Thank you, Nimesh. Thank you, Vikas, uh, for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, to all the listeners. So let me first touch upon uh, the risks, which I think Nimesh has highlighted the risk while investing in mid cap and small caps. So first of all, let's whenever we talk about risk, the first step which we do at Carnelian is to understand the source of the risk. Unless you know the source of risk, it will be futile exercise to mitigate the risk. And to simplify the things, what we have done at Carnelian, we have simplified risk into three broad categories. We call it for simplicity type A risk, type B risk and type C risk. Type A risk is the risk which can lead to permanent loss of capital. Capital which means once the investor put the money into the company, they may lose 80 to 90% of their capital, even 100% of their capital permanently. That is the kind of risk which I talk about a type A risk. Type B risk is the risk which can result on account of the volatility in the market forces. Like it can happen either on account of some geopolitical issues, some external macro issues, but these risks are, I would say, temporary volatility, which may either take the prices of the stocks uh, up above their intrinsic value or below their intrinsic value. So this is the risk which we would say that we will live with this risk. There is no option and we will marry this risk. In fact, we would rather use that risk to our advantage. Like whenever the prices of the stocks goes much above intrinsic value, we may use this risk to book some profit and whenever it brings some of the good stocks much below their intrinsic value, we may use this as an opportunity to buy those stocks. And there is now third element which is a type C risk. Type C risk is something which is called as opportunity loss risk. In opportunity loss risk can happen like it can happen either because of the lack of knowledge or on account of human biases. Like you happen to invest in sector A, whereas the money uh, or the compounding, large compounding is happening in sector B. Or you have invested in some stocks within that sectors, whereas the compounding is happening in some other stock. So our entire endeavor at Carnelian is to, to uh, mitigate type A and type C risk and we are happy with type B risk. Now let's talk about uh, type A risk. Type A risk can happen only on account of two reasons, which is permanent loss of capital, either by investing into the company with inferior quality of management or with the bad management companies or with the companies where the business quality itself is not good, business is prone to disruption risk, business doesn't have any moat. So if you can mitigate this risk, you can significantly reduce the probability of incurring the list in your investing companies. Now coming specifically to mid and small cap companies, in mid and small cap companies, one thing is like, unfortunately, we won't have that long track record of, uh, of wealth creation. We won't have a, uh, that long track record of their growth trajectory. These companies are still building the organization, still building the culture. They are in the early stages, building the processes uh, tech, on the technology side. Also, they are building the technology caution. Unlike large cap companies where like most of those things have been evolved. So in mid and small cap companies, generally you have to be very, very careful when assessing the quality of management as well as the quality of business. 
and when you assess the quality of management i think forensic plays a big big role like how well the company is disclosing the results of their operations by way of financial statements whether the reported earning of the company is true and correct uh, uh, representation of their uh, uh, their uh, real earnings quite often i have seen like investors generally focus too much on reported numbers and they pay hardly any emphasis on what is there beyond reported numbers so at carnegie and one thing which we say for us where is my profit is more important than what is my profit what is my profit is the reported earning and where is my profit is the balance sheet so unless you see the profit elements into the each and every asset elements in the balance sheet it will be very very difficult for an investor just to rely on the reported earning and that to in mid and small cap companies it is always prone to the uh, accidents so with this i think i would say that uh, and second is the quality of management and there the governance study as well as the related party transaction as well as the background of the ceos or the management who is running the company plays a big big role so this is i think one very very important parameter which we look at carnelian and uh, back to you nimesh uh, no thanks uh, ashish on just quick thoughts you answer at least three or four questions of mine which was uh, supposedly come but just want to take a preliminary thoughts from ashish and then i'll go to the next question Sure. Uh, mute. Oh. Ashish, Ashish, mute. Ashish, mute. Ashish, on mute. Not yet. You are still on mute. the icon there i ah, now it's gone it's gone yeah so you can hear me right perfect yeah. now clear so, loud and clear yeah yeah so uh, i just follow up on what manoj mentioned and also for a moment you know i'll just dial back on that uh, newspaper article that you quoted see i think i just uh, you know in reference to that article which said that you know say x percentage of stocks have contributed 50% of the uh, gains if you really ask me frankly you know all our listeners and all you know investors i would urge them with all due respect not to get overly carried away with such articles the reason is because in everything in life if the numbers will work exactly like that everything in life you know sure. if you run a business 20% of customers will account for 80% of revenue correct uh, you know if you see the whole country some uh, 5 10% of people will account for 90% of tax collection Okay. so the point is like this that uh, if you you know and recently similar thing came that you know somebody said it is published all over that in last one year small cap index is up by some 60% or something correct okay. and in that context you are saying that the article said that okay last one year small cap is up 60% but within that some few number of stocks have contributed to 50% of the gain etc etc that is how statistics always works it never changes that is first point second point is that if somebody says that last one year small cap or mid cap has gone up 60% or 50% whatever it is then they should also keep in mind nimesh that you know if i tell you let us say let's stay, do a thought experiment if i tell you that in one year small cap index has gone up by 60% one is the obvious conclusion ke bhai bahut chala gaya upar correct dusra sawal ye bhi ho sakta hai ke bhai one year pehle bahut niche tha kya correct So Absolutely. one year back the small cap index was at the same level that it was in January 2018 right so i am not here to say that you should put money in small cap or put money in mid cap i am just talking specifically about your point about that article kya right. hota hai ki bahut bar numbers jis tarike se present kiya jata hai aur us numbers mein se hum kya read karte hain wo i think it needs a little bit more uh, thinking correct now yeah. coming to the second part which manoj ji you know brilliantly uh, he covered uh, i would just put it this way just as a you know build up on that like just to add you know what we do in white oak for example see jaise kya hota hai ki agar aap finance ka textbook padhte hain usme likha hai value of a business is present value of its future cash flows abhi jitna log finance padha hai wo log ko pata hai ki it's a present value of future cash flows 
इट इज नॉट अ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ फ्यूचर ईपीएस इट इज नॉट अ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ फ्यूचर पैट तो उन्होंने बढ़िया तरीके से बताया कि भाई अकाउंटिंग नंबर नहीं देखने का है अल्टीमेटली एंड यू नो ही सेट ब्रिलियंटली अबाउट गवर्नेंस करेक्ट द बिगेस्ट प्रूफ ऑफ गवर्नेंस इज इफ दैट देर इज प्रॉफिट बट देर इज नो कैश फ्लो एंड ऑल गवर्नेंस डिजास्टर्स हैपन इन कंपनीज विच कीप शोइंग प्रॉफिट बट डोंट शो कंपेरेबल और एडिक्वेट और कमेंसुरेट कैश फ्लो so what we have done you know uh, what prashant our founder and our entire investments team what they do is that they basically value any company uh, two things are there one is we always value you know we restate all the financials like manoj ji said we follow that that we restate all the financials in our own ek tarike se likho bhai usne jo kitab mein likha theek hai apan apne handwriting mein fir se likhenge usko so we restate the financials in free cash flow terms second is that free cash flow which is generated has to be more than the cost of capital so if you do everything on free cash flow basis and if you ensure that you know the financials are stated as per your requirement just i'll give you an example ek bahut famous university hai jahan pe sab log accounting or finance or investments padhne jaate that is flame university in pune correct yeah mereko sare university ka nahi pata hai flame university ka ek course hai which is saying that accounting for investors इसका क्या मतलब है सी हकीकत क्या है कि हमारा जो अकाउंटिंग का पूरा फ्रेमवर्क या फॉर्मेट्स है दे आर मेड फॉर टैक्स अथॉरिटीज दे आर मेड फॉर चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स राइट बट इन्वेस्टर्स को जो अकाउंटिंग देखना चाहिए लाइक मनोज जी सिंह वो अलग होता है क्योंकि एक्चुअली जो अकाउंट्स बनाया जाता है वो टैक्स वाले को दिखाने के लिए बताया जाता है या अकाउंटेंट के लिए बनाया जाता है लेकिन इन्वेस्टर को जो अकाउंट्स देखना है दैट विल बी डिफरेंट so we look for two things we look at free cash flow and we see that the free cash flow has to be in excess of the cost of capital and i think if this is how one looks at then lot of the governance disasters can be nipped in the bud uh, that is something which i just wanted to add no brilliant uh, but your answer on uh, the to the article was brilliant i think uh, investors sometimes get carried away with the way articles are uh, positioned or portrayed out here you beautifully put that across pareto analysis works everywhere and i think uh, request investors to not get car- carried away with the way the article yesterday showed up we at least four five investors sent that article to me uh, giving asking our view let's come to the second question uh, which is uh, you know as an investor we get uh, thinking about that it, it's been said small and mid cap indices are trading above their long term averages uh, uh, mid caps are probably at you know 30 40% expensive small caps are probably 20% more expensive than are there so does valuation concern you at this point in time is valuation red flag uh, again anyone can just uh, take up uh, first uh, and answer your thoughts on the valuations currently uh, in the small and mid cap space so uh, you must definitely see in any market there is froth in pockets so even today so uh, what you have to see you as i ashish has beautifully mentioned that in the article they have captured only one element correct and ignore the other element like he mentioned that oh, one year back the mid and small cap index was at the level of 2018 so 2018 yes. to 2023 the entire earning and the balance sheet accumulation has been ignored by the market so yeah. that is and this is also i think only one aspect when they compare the entire mid cap and small cap b- b- basket and they compare with the history but one also need to see that how the fundamentals of the mid cap and small cap are different from the history if you compare the roes today of the same mid cap and small caps whether roes are better i am damn sure that roes are much much better than what it used to be the their balance sheet whether it is stronger the balance sheet is stronger even if you look at the consensus growth estimate the consensus growth estimate is much much better for the mid cap and small cap uh, index overall also vis a vis history now you also need to go mid cap and small caps the sector level uh, opportunities and sector level uh, the opportunities available so uh, i would say that in doing that or in doing a complete analysis of mid cap and small cap and just saying that they are expensive i think it will be injustice in any market like when you are building a portfolio of 25 30 35 stocks or 40 stocks 
I don't think that it is difficult to find out the stocks which are reasonably valued or even some of the bargain buys which may be available at lower than the intrinsic value. So I think the better way to do this analysis is whether the stocks are trading expensive with respect to their fundamental, with respect to their growth opportunity, with respect to ROEs and ROCs these companies are ma making and with respect to health of balance sheet of these companies. Once we look at these things, we are extremely comfortable at the current level of valuation. The growth levels are much, much better. The balance sheets are much, much better. So that gives us much more confidence that uh, and uh, one more point I would like to touch whenever growth comes, the P multiple follows. Let me just uh, touch upon. Uh, can you guess what was the P, P multiple of Jap Japan before it peaked? No, I don't. No, it was, was 60 X price to earning multiple. At that yeah. time, when, when Japan was growing, uh, means exponentially, and that was the way investors were trading the entire country. Japan was representing a large percentage of the market cap of the globe. India is no way near to that. Still, I think if you look any of the stats, India is still trading anywhere between 25 to 27 times forward price to earning multiple. So that way, I would I won't say that there is a froth in Indian market, especially when India is generating world best ROEs and it is growing at the world's best growth rates. So that's before going to Ashish, I just want to tell you a very very important point: valuation cannot be looked up uh, without the capital efficiency of the business, without the balance sheet. Just want to add uh, your thoughts on the how has been the earnings growth in the small and mid cap sector in the last uh, few years because earnings is very very critical, and then. Uh, your thoughts on your portfolio or in general small and mid-cap earnings, how have they grown in the last couple of years? So let me touch upon our portfolio. Uh, one of our portfolio, which is mid-cap and small-cap heavy, there we expect the our earning CAGR of the portfolio level at 26%. The portfolio stocks are trading at a 28 times price to earning multiple. So still they are trading at around 1.1, 1.2 times PEG basis. Right. The ROEs of same stocks is upwards of 19-20%. And our portfolio has 0.1 debt to equity ratio on a portfolio level aggregate basis. So we call our portfolio like whenever we talk about our portfolio, we look at whether our portfolio is faster than benchmark, whether our portfolio is stronger than benchmark. So our portfolio as of now, stronger means it is higher ROE and whether this portfolio is cheaper than benchmark on all three parameters. If I look only on fundamentals, our portfolio is faster than benchmark. Our portfolio is stronger than benchmark in terms of ROEs and leverage. And it is cheaper than benchmark in terms of price earning growth ratios. A brilliant point uh, uh, and brilliant statistics for your portfolio. Uh, Ashish, uh, your thoughts, valuation, ROE, earnings, over to yeah. you. So, you know, Nimesh, uh, I'll tell you a funny thing. If you look at TV on TV, social media, especially on Twitter, you know, any of these media, uh, you see a lot of people of my age group, you know, the older people, like I'm nearing 50, so I'm using my reference point. So, in our age group, we have a lot of people in our age group. They are consistently giving warnings to the younger people. You know, see, there is a lot of criticism. 30, 40 lakh broking accounts are opening. 30, 40 lakh SIPs are opening. Market volumes are going through the roof, right? So a lot of the people of older generation, they are basically saying that the young people are coming after 2020. They have never seen the correction. 20% market will fall away. So I agree, actually, one concern is that many young people have not seen the mandi. That is true. I don't disagree. Okay. Our equally big problem is that many young people have forgotten the mandi. See, so true. I'll tell you, so true. I'll tell you the reason. See, what scenario Manoj ji is describing, this is a whole kaya palat hua hai. See, yeah. uh, I'll, let me explain. Why did I say that many young people have forgotten the mandi? क्योंकि पिछली बार हमने तेजी देखा है 2002 से 2008 में करेक्ट या 
now there are a lot of 40 year olds who have started their career after 2008 yeah right so what happens in a teji let us understand that first from 2002 to 2008 nominal gdp growth was double digit sensex nifty corporate earning growth was more than 20 percent compounded right in a period of five to six years consistently earning growth was more than 20 percent from 2002 to 2008 earning mota moti quadruple ho gaya right so you understand one thing when nominal gdp growth double digit hota hai aur pure ke pure benchmark ka growth double digit hota hai what will happen is lots of companies will have high double digit lots of company will have single digit and on an average the universe is growing at double digit abhi uske baad aap socho kya hua to 2002 to 2008 ka baat khatam kar le jab 5 6 saal mein earnings quadruple hua to index 7 guna upar gaya मैं ये नहीं बोल रहा अभी होने वाला है मैं खाली आपको समझा रहा हूं कि तेजी में होता क्या है करेक्ट नाउ यू कम टू उसके बाद उसके बाद 2008-9 से लेके 2021 तक बाय द टाइम वी केम टू 2019 नॉमिनल जीडीपी ग्रोथ वाज 6% पूरा 2008-9 से लेके 2021 का पूरा का पूरा पीरियड का अर्निंग ग्रोथ 3 से 4% 2014 में रेजिम चेंज हुआ उसके बाद भी अर्निंग ग्रोथ 6 से 7% था राइट right? So you understand one thing that for an entire decade, if you get three, four percent earning growth for a decade, you get some low single digit or single digit nominal GDP growth. So what will happen is that most of the companies will struggle. Easily, if you see in that decade, some log Asian paint, Bajaj Finance, HDFC Bank, Titan, uske aage wo baat nahi karta Correct. Or pura ka pura decade mein, for people who don't know, it will be shocking. 2008 ka Nifty ka peak. 6200 tha mm-hmm. when both of us were working together i'll tell you the worst phase was august 2013 august right. 2013 nifty was 5200 meaning sade 5 saal ke baad nifty apne previous high ke niche tha okay then i'll give you example 2014 regime change hua market mein teji hua march 2015 mein nifty ka peak aaya 8900 बस कोविड आया ना तभी भी निफ्टी 8900 के नीचे था ठीक है अच्छा 2 मिनट पहले मैंने आपको बोला जनवरी 2008 में निफ्टी का पीक 6000 के ऊपर था करेक्ट आपको पता है जब चाइना का करेंसी डीवैल्यूएशन हुआ कमोडिटी का क्रैश हुआ फरवरी 2016 में निफ्टी का लेवल 6600 था 6700 8 साल के बाद राइट सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट देयर इज अ ह्यूज जॉनर ऑफ पीपल हियर whose mental makeup is that every time market goes 1000 point up, it is going to collapse. And every time people, you know, like Nimesh is there, Manoj ji is there, I am there. Every time people like us, when we quote about earning growth, earning growth is not coming. In the last decade, we call it Karan Arjun in the last decade, that it will never come. What happened is that if earning growth is coming, people don't believe it. Right? So now what is the scenario? Now, so I am not, see, look, please don't misunderstand. I am just telling you one thing that, how the market behaves in terms of numbers, is something that we have to understand. Right? So now what is the scenario? How the market behaves in terms of numbers when there is a massive explosion of growth that is difficult to comprehend. And he's right in pointing out, see, because these P multiples, they are about the future. Correct. See, uh, let us, for our viewers, let us deconstruct simple term. If there is a P of 20, it means one rupee of EPS okay. is Keeping being paid. So look at it differently. If one rupee remains one rupee, you have acquired 20 years of earnings. So clearly a PE multiple has a lot to do with future visibility. If you buy something for 20 times, it means you have bought 20 years of earnings, means that you have the confidence, the demonstrated implicit confidence that this 20 years will remain and 20 years will be done and will grow. Correct? So what happens is that the moment you get 3 to 4 years of 20% earning growth, it is basic nature of market to think that this will just go like Because in the previous decade, how market was thinking, Earning growth to anani wala. But now the market is resetting itself to think that abhi earning growth aega because char sal se was 2020 ke bottom se leke abhi tag nifty 500 ka earning growth 34% compounded. Nifty ka earning growth be soga, nifty 500 ka use jada hai. So what I'm trying to say is that now the market has to readjust itself. Correct? 
so we also have to understand that okay we are not in 2003 to 2008 we are right. not in 2009 to 2020 right. but we have to just keep in mind that today's reality is different so we should not be guided by any one kind of framework or any one kind of thought process and you know like rightly pointed out कौन सा महंगा है कौन सा सस्ता है पैसा कहां पे लगाना कहां पे नहीं लगाना दैट इज अ पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजर इज ऑन ऑन गोइंग जॉब एट ऑल पॉइंट्स इन टाइम राइट टुडे इफ एनीथिंग इज लेबल्ड पीएसयू एनीथिंग इज लेबल्ड रेलवे एनीथिंग इज लेबल्ड डिफेंस तो दैट इज ऑल फ्लाइंग बट देयर आर स्मॉल कैप एंड मिड कैप स्टॉक्स अभी पिछले 6 महीने में तो फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज ज्यादा चला है राइट right? आगे जाके कुछ और चलेगा you see for example you take small cap companies or mid cap it companies which are serving financial services or serving banks we think there is lot of potential in that that is what we are adding in our portfolio they are small and mid cap to hum log sab cheez ko cross to nahi kar rahe so at any point in time something will be expensive some something will be cheap that is obviously the portfolio managers duty to look around you know what to look for and all said and done clients asset allocation is with the client and the advisor we have to focus on beating the benchmark or generating a, a reasonable return over period of time beautiful i think uh, ashish i must uh, acknowledge and confess on behalf of investor as well as the industry participant the way you explain it it becomes very very easy for all of us to relate uh, and that uh, conviction so thanks for that and uh, have you met recently uh, mr modi or aap abhi bhi कुछ इलेक्शन मोड में हो बिकॉज और हिंदी में बहुत इंटरव्यू दे रहे हो ये क्या कर रहे हो बिकॉज आई कैन सी योर नेम इन हिंदी आई डोंट नो माय नेम वाज इन हिंदी सो आई थॉट आई एम सपोज्ड टू स्पीक इन हिंदी ओके आई कैन रिपीट दिस इन इंग्लिश आई डोंट माइंड नो नो इट वाज फैंटास्टिक टू हियर यू इन हिंदी एज़ वेल बट आई थिंक यू टोल्ड मी इन चेन्नई आल्सो एंड लाइक मोदी यू आर स्पीकिंग इन हिंदी सो आई होप अ लॉट ऑफ चेन्नई इज अंडरस्टैंड योर हिंदी बट योर कांसेप्ट एंड योर फिलॉसफी इज वेरी वेल अंडरस्टूड सो थैंक यू फॉर sharing uh, your inputs there uh coming forward uh, to the discussion uh, there have been a crazy amount of flows uh, and again i'm just looking at the data point uh, this year uh, 103% uh, is inflows are coming into small cap mid cap is about 40% large cap is only about 12% and as on may 24 the aum in mid caps is now 3.2 lakh uh, uh, to 8 lakh crores which has exceeded a large cap for the first time to my knowledge i don't know whether it has happened in the past uh, it shows large cap aum is 3.2 lakh crore and total aum of small cap funds is 2.7 lakh crore uh, up from 1.53 lakh so in your experience have you seen that crazy amount of flows uh, into uh, one set of sector and how do you approach uh, this issue two part of question one do you think this continues the flow and two uh is uh, excessive flow a worry to you uh, in the mid and small cap sector uh, you want ashish to take up oh yeah yeah so uh, see nimesh i think uh, uh, so one i would just urge you to uh, you know for all our listeners one thing to keep in mind is that in the industry like i believe you're referring to mutual fund industry when you said the right. large cap sector yeah. numbers yeah. so in our industry actually if you ask me the largest categories are all the mix categories you know like flexi cap multi cap or you know when balanced funds can have a combination of large mid and small Correct. so i think the biggest category is the mixed asset classes and pure large cap yes pure large cap is not the biggest category really speaking but what happens is that all these mixed asset classes also have very large amount of large cap allocation correct, correct. so as a result of that just taking mutual fund industries category wise aum may not give us the correct picture having said so it is indeed true that uh there is some amount of uh, chasing of past performance which happens and you know in the last couple of years or last one year specifically if suddenly small cap has given a rip roaring return then people might have tendency to more pile on to uh, that yesterday in fact my presentation was on this that you know if you want to use one year number and three year number the only use is to make sure where you have to be careful uh, right so what i would say is that yes you should have some caution into these things because they have run up a lot having said so you know i think uh, like i said just don't go by the industry aum because there is a lot of mixed asset uh, in it now when it comes to flows i think that it is also at the same time you know the investment universe is also expanding quite dramatically i'll give you a couple of examples say 2022 onwards i have seen say for example in our portfolios at one point in time we saw hospital stocks come you know we invested in hospital stocks they ran up a lot we booked some profit correct 
then there was a point in time like i was telling you you know uh, say industrials you know if you see in the last couple of years right so what happens is that the investment unit while there are flows are there but there are hundreds of companies which are also getting listed uh, the market cap has also gone up the growth and investment opportunities have also got uh, broad based right so many things have to be seen together i think that if there is a increasing fervor of investing into equity markets and capital markets i just hope that the supply also keeps up i mean supply of good paper as any supply for the sake of supply because a lot of time what happens flow results in unwanted supply also but i think in the last 2 3 years what we've seen is that the flow is equally also finding uh, that there are some really good uh, businesses which are uh, coming into the uh, market also i think india's private equity is coming of age so today what is happening is that even if you look at small cap mid cap when companies are coming for listing this is not 1990 that you are seeing the company for the first time today when companies are coming for listing they are coming after having spent 5 and 15 years in the private equity cradle and then they are actually uh, coming in so i think yes flows getting directed in one in one set you know a lot of flow going into small cap yes one should be wary one should be careful because if people are chasing something it's sign of topishness that i appreciate but i think from a longer term perspective purely as a fund management uh, perspective if i look at it i think as long as the flow is also matched by our capability to expand our research and by the capability to get more coverage uh, or more options to invest i think it is manageable last thing i would clarify we ourselves manage all multi cap strategies so we don't manage any one cap that i just want to clarify now again uh, we beautiful answer actually i should have added what i was going to ask a question size of aum in the pms and alternates is a worry but i think you covered the new papers coming in the depth the liquidity all that is covered so uh, i think i can skip that uh, question uh, beautifully answered by you uh, let me uh, bring in manoj uh, manoj you spent uh, a long time in forensic study uh, uh, of the mid and small cap in your experience uh, at edelweiss so how important uh, you know can you throw some uh, light on uh, uh takeaways for us from, from a forensic study how important is quality management and corporate governance especially in investing in small and mid caps over to you sure sure uh, so nimesh let me give you some stats in fact in 2022 in fact i did the forensic uh, reports of the company under the name analysis beyond consensus which is abc uh from 2008 till 2018 when i was at edelweiss in fact i have started this forensic first time so uh, and there i i have written means about numerous large cap mid cap small cap companies the kind of issues which investors were missing so in 2022 what we have done we have done a detailed study of around 8300 companies which are listed and we found that around 570 companies have destroyed almost 32 lakh crores of investors wealth which is around 400 billion dollars that's huge amount and then we yeah that's huge and in fact that is that time that to, that means that is bigger than the market cap of the largest market cap company also uh, in india so that kind of wealth which got destroyed and then we did a study on these 570 companies we found that 570 companies if investors at that time would have just looked at the balance sheet and in fact i think ashish has beautifully mentioned that one of the job of the investor is not to read the reported numbers but to rewrite the reported numbers rewrite the balance sheet rewrite the cash flows and in fact one thing we found out companies are capable of even overestimating their cash flows and for which we have published various reports that even the cash flows of the companies are being overstated so around 55% of this universe of 570 companies which have destroyed 32 lakh crores of wealth 55% of them had balance sheet issues 52% of them had corporate governance issues 53% of that have clear forensic red flags and around 49% of these companies had multiple issues like after seeing that you will uh, means decide that you are not going to touch those companies so a large portion of this permanent loss which investors have incurred could have been avoided by avoiding these companies at the first uh, uh 
uh, at the first outcome of your forensic analysis. So that way I would say that forensic analysis I would put at utmost importance. At Carnelian, we have two framework. In fact, for forensic, we call it as a clear framework and connect framework. Clear framework as the name, uh, it, it covers the cash flow analysis. It covers the liability side of balance sheet analysis. It covers the earning quality analysis. It covers the asset quality analysis. And last one is R, which is related party and governance issues. So we have built the entire framework on each of these parameters where we check the multiple points in the company. Then uh, whether clear alone is sufficient. Like at times, companies also know that what investors will be looking, they will present their balance sheet in such a manner that investors can get misguided even after doing forensic deep dive. Like just to give you an example, there are companies in the past where the un the related party, like I can name that company also, like if you look at the United Spirits balance sheet in past, United Spirit and Kingfisher were not considered as related parties. So they have, they have created the structure in such a manner that it will skip the definition of related parties. So these kind of things, if you want to uncover, you need to follow the connect framework also where you need to do the plant visit, you need to do peer set analysis, you talk to industry experts, you need to see that what peers are making. At times, we have rejected even the companies which are re re which are uh, which are making the largest EBITDA margins and we have selected the companies which are making lower EBITDA margins. When like in four, all of the industry participants are making let's say 10-12% margins and one company is making 25-30% margin you first have to go to the source of that margin rather than saying that this 25-30% margin is good. And once you go to the source of the margin, you may find, okay, these margins are manipulated. These are the issues behind that margins. So all those aspects, it is a very, very complex topic, but I would say it is a very simple topic for investors. And this is the basic to the research, which is generally ignored by investor community. Yeah, back to mm -hmm. you, Nimesh. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, and I'm, uh, still that 30 lakh crore is reverberating in my mind, the data. I'll, I'll look forward to uh, reading that report. I haven't read that. Uh, I will so, to... Yeah, uh, please. That will be nice. Uh, 2020 report. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Ashi, you want to add something? Or uh, next question? Yeah. Do you want? No, no, not really. We can go ahead. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So uh, let me ask uh, Ashish now uh, the question. Ashi, what would be your organization approach to uh, small and mid-cap investing? Where it is bottoms up, it is top down, uh, uh, and uh, what should the, uh, in, I mean, not the investor should do, but how do you approach uh, investing, in spe especially in mid and small cap, because that's what the topic of the discussion today has been there. And you can throw your light of the my white token investing. See, I think, you know, uh, Nimesh, we don't start with any bias or, you know, ab in issue. We never start with an assumption and I'm deliberately stating this because I have seen a lot of times uh, we find that clients uh, intrinsically think that in a longer term, small cap and mid cap uh, should do much better than large cap. Uh, if you see long term data like 15 years, 20 years and all, you will find that small cap index, mid cap index, large cap index, the longer term CAGR is pretty much in the ballpark. There is nothing to show that small cap has done but still we insist still we insist at any point in time that 40 50 percent of our portfolio or 30 uh, if you see our pmss for example typically at least 30 percent up to 50 percent we are in small and mid cap so first i've clarified it is not because we think small and mid cap should outperform large cap not for that the reason why we insist on having small and mid cap in the portfolio is because alpha you know, when you try to generate outperformance over a benchmark, like if we have multi-cap portfolio, we want to beat BSE 500, right? What we find is that our ability to generate alpha is much higher in small and mid-cap. The reason because in long term, even if the index gives similar returns, but the variability of returns amongst companies is very, very high, right? So small and mid-cap has very high amount of, you can put it this way, small and mid-cap has very high amount of, uh, you know, heterogeneity in terms of business models. See, I'll take an example. You look at large cap. 
Now, what is there in the large cap index? Say HPBP IOC. If you want to generate out alpha, which one will you pick? Chalta hai to HPBP IOC tino chalta hai, nahi chalta hai to koi bhi nahi chalta hai. Correct? Then you yes. take steel, for example. Steel also, <laughs> there will be degrees of difference, but if it works, everything works. If it doesn't work, none of them works. Right? If you see, you might have, you might insist TCS is better, Infosys is better, what is better, etc. But when there is headwind, everything is getting impacted. So what we find is that small and mid cap, the heterogeneity is very, very high. If you take mid cap IT companies, all have different business models and serving different segments or different geographies. If you take chemical companies, for example, if you take consumer white goods, right? So there are many examples where small and mid cap as a team, because we have 32 analysts covering more than 700 companies. So our coverage is very, very wide. You know, you take banking, we have nine analysts covering 130 companies. If you take pharma, healthcare, we have six analysts covering 95 companies. That's so small team. and mid cap is an area of passion purely from perspective that there is a huge heterogeneity amongst businesses. And heterogeneity is the first thing you need if you want to generate alpha. A sector or segment of market which is homogeneous, very difficult to generate alpha or you will get very little alpha if at all you can generate anything. But small and mid cap is done purely for generating alpha because there is huge amount of heterogeneity. Second thing is that if there is a normal thing which people feel that in small cap and mid cap, this is a small company. This is a normal perception. This perception is not 100% right because in a lot of businesses, the sector itself is small and hence the sector leader is a small cap company or a mid cap company. So we are even when we are buying small cap and mid cap, one, we are buying highly differentiated businesses. Second, we insist on buying still leadership businesses. So what if it is small cap or mid cap in their segment or sub segment, you will find that we are owning the leaders of those. And the third thing, like I told you that in small cap and mid cap, you know, see you compare it with fishing. If you want to have a large catch of fish, then you have to go deep into the sea. Correct. Mm -hmm. So small and mid cap is like that. If you want to generate alpha from small and mid cap, it is like, you know, deep sea kind of thing. And that is where the sharks also are. That is where the risk also is. That is why I think, you know, all the discussion that initially what points I was highlighting or a lot of, uh, you know, expertise that Manojji is bringing, that is most relevant in small and mid cap, because that is where the difference comes in terms of analyzing the uh, governance. That is where it is important to understand the business and the cash flows. So I think that, you know, we have huge passion for investing in small and mid cap. That is the source where ultimately see mm -hmm. what happens in the last couple of years. The market is working on certain labels like you know defense PSU, railway uh, you know cyclical energy power nothing wrong with it but when the market is working just with certain labels and themes it becomes a headwinded environment we tend to do better when the market is broad based in the sense that it is you know completely dependent on stock picking rather than any big headwind or tailwind of macros correct Ultimately, in the long run, what will happen is that this small and mid cap stock picking and the bottom up research having 30, 40, 30, 35 people covering seven, 800 companies, that is what is going to generate alpha over the uh, long term. So that is where we put maximum effort. Again, very nicely represented. And I want to go back, come back to you again. And within the small and mid cap, would you uh, do active management? Uh, you are a voracious reader. So what works in India? Buy and hold philosophy. Does active management work uh, in creating that alpha generation? Just your thoughts. That'd be helpful. And then the see, what happens is buy and hold. And Nimesh, many times buy and hold get misrepresented as buy and forget. It is never forget, never ever. It is always buy and review, right? Buy and hold, but intermittently keep reviewing, right? So there is no such thing that you have to get married to, correct? I think buy and hold is misrepresented as buy and forget that is i don't think anybody on earth practices it uh, that way correct so that is one thing to keep in mind that nothing is forget you know you buy and review correct ultimately we have to beat benchmarks ultimately we have to create wealth for our clients so that is first thing second thing i think when you are referring about active management see i do feel that you know see part of the reason why in india you know i don't think that is true of carnelian i don't think it is true of white oak in the long term what has happened is that there have been intermittent phases when fund managers have not beaten the benchmark. My personal opinion in India, 
इट इज मोर रिलेटेड टू वॉट आई डिस्क्राइब टू अबाउट द इकोनॉमिक सीनारियो देखो भाई अगर नॉमिनल जी डी पी ग्रोथ छह परसेंट है अब देखो 2018-19 मार्केट में एक एक्रोनिम बन गया था देर वॉज एन एक्रोनिम दैट ओनली रिपिक स्टॉक्स आर डूइंग वेल विच इज एच डी एफ सी रिलायंस आईसीआईसीआई टाटा मोटर्स इन्फोसिस राइट एंड कोटक बैंक यू नो सिक्स और सेवन स्टॉक्स वेर डिड दैट फ्रेज कम फ्रॉम यू नीड टू थिंक दैट फ्रेज केम बिकॉज नॉमिनल जी डी पी ग्रोथ वॉज फाइव टू सिक्स परसेंट earnings growth was barely you know low single digit how do you get on a index aggregate how do you get low single digit earning growth is because few companies are doing well and vast majority are in deep trouble so what happens when economic growth contracts obviously corporate growth also becomes very narrow and active managers will struggle because what do active managers do they are trying to buy businesses which are growing much better than average which are generating free cash flow and growing profits but if the entire nominal gdp growth is 5 6% and index itself in 2018 19 80% of all small cap stocks gave negative return 60% of all mid cap stocks gave negative return fir bhi nifty plus 5% tha ye do saal mein so in india what has happened is that active managers and even in 2002 i have seen whenever the economic growth is pathetic whenever index performance becomes narrow active managers will struggle but what happens is that in india lot of this extrapolation comes from us us mein alpha nahi aa raha ultimately sometime even we will not get alpha now that in all humility i think that is a wrong extrapolation because you know in us in last 25 to 30 years market cap has gone up 4x now manoj ji aap dhyan se sochiye aap active manager hai in us in last 3 decades the market cap has gone up 4x but number of listed companies has become half if you are a manager of public equities if listed universe becomes half even as market cap goes up four times just imagine how much your playground has shrunk yeah. in us the alpha has the alpha is struggling in us managers are struggling to generate alpha in us because the listed universe is shrinking and whatever universe is there is all becoming mega cap mm-hmm. correct that is what has happened in us in last 30 years people will keep on telling you ke us mein institutions are investing into equity but they don't tell you that institutions put 65 to 70% of their money in private equity pre ipo crossover buy out all those kinds of things not in the listed space so now think carefully i am supplying to you coca cola but one day i come and tell you hey, nimesh hey, coca cola is not good for you it has lot of sugar it will hurt your health you better drink tonic water or soda water and i find that vikas is a fat cat he is a institution big guy i tell him vikas ji why you want to buy coca cola man i supply you concentrate you use the concentrate and buy what you want to do what what you want to do with it so in last 30 years in us active mutual funds have been stripped apart and sold in two packages to the retail guy you are selling index saying that there is no alpha to the institution you are selling the private market saying that this is alpha rich opportunity india is nowhere there as of yet i am told this year in us spacex might get listed with 150 billion ipo we are living in a country where save bhujia and potato wafer wala is still coming for ipo we have long way to go there will be good managers and bad managers good conditions bad conditions some strategy working some strategy not working i respect all of that we have to work hard you know and i know we know yaar if we don't outperform people will give money in index that is obvious there is no debate left for that but i am just saying that don't form your impression because of what is happening in us that example doesn't apply to us and in last 4 5 years in our market people struggled because of the anemic economic growth the lack of opportunity but see what is happening when the earnings are getting broad based you know uh, there are enough and more people beating the market hands down yeah lovely and i must again uh, admire you uh, ashish for bringing and connecting data and simplifying for uh, all the viewers and advisors uh, thank you for that i know we almost reaching 1 1 uh, yeah. o'clock uh, vikash also popped up you want to just add the closing comment uh, manoj on the yeah. last question on the side and then we move forward yeah no i think uh, uh, ashish has beautifully covered yeah, uh, I and so. i think w- one thing which i would like to add unlike us in india we are getting every day good quality new names 
So yes. our opportunity size is expanding here, expanding. whereas unlike US where it is shrinking. So even and the second thing is that more and more liquidity is coming to India. Like if you take overall all ETFs across the world, they have significantly underweight on the fastest growing economy in the world. When this underweight will become even equal weight, it means almost 1.5 trillion of additional liquidity to the country. And that will be absorbed by existing company as well as various new scaled up good platform which are coming in the public domain. So with that, I would say that we are very, very uh, 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 lucky to be in this era of India, where India is going to transform itself from a developing nation to a developed nation. And whenever this happens in the first phase of growth, you will see exponential and non-linear opportunity. But at the same time, you have to keep your risk radars also on. You have always to see risk adjusted returns rather than only returns. So this is my concluding remark. Uh, over to you, Ashish. No, nothing to add. Nothing to add. Thank you. No, so uh, thank you, Ashish and Manoj, for your time and insights into small and mid-cap investing. I always insist that investors should choose a professional fund manager no matter what. In case of large cap, sometimes I say, Tum khud se manage kar lena. I'm using Hindi or sales. But when it comes to small and mid cap or in equity investing, I say just blindly go uh, with a good professional manager. Take time in evaluating you know, what White Oak is doing, what Carnelian is doing, uh, and the recommendations which come from PMS and AIF and experts which come across there. But uh, my humble request to each one of you, choose a professional fund manager and let the power of uh, compounding work for you. Uh, you. You heard it from Manoj, how difficult how deep one needs to go in understanding the small and mid-cap investing. Uh, uh, as always, Ashish has you know dissected the data so beautifully, uh, but uh, needs to have ability. And the, you know the team which White Oak had, you know, I didn't know 32 analysts uh, working so deeply. I think it's a full-time work. Uh, choose one of the managers or any managers uh, which uh, Vikas and team uh, recommends. Uh, that would be my closing comments. Uh, and uh, over to you, Vikas. Yeah, thank you, Nimesh, for moderating the session so beautifully. You've taken the best out of these two gentlemen. So thank you so much. Thanks, Ashish and uh, Manoj for sharing your valuable wisdom. Thank you. With, with thank that, you we so can the session here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.